If you somehow never played Minesweeper before, it's a simple puzzle game first released back in 1989. You clear a board by clicking little gray tiles. If you click on a hidden mine, you instantly blow up and lose. The game hasn't really changed much in over three decades. This got me thinking. What would Minesweeper's casual gameplay be like if it could be experienced from a 3D, first-person perspective? To find out, I decided to hop into Unity and build the game from scratch. With an emphasis on huge, in-your-face explosions, my goal was to take Minesweeper's intensity to the next level. As many times as I've played Minesweeper, I have to admit, I never actually understood how to win. You might think this would be a great time to learn before I start building the game and all, but nah. My first goal was to run around and smash stuff with a giant hammer. In real life, I think most professional minesweepers use a metal detector or something to carefully scan their tiles for mines. That's just not the direction I want to go. To me, a mouse click in the classic minesweeper game is best represented in 3D by slamming down a huge hammer. So that's what I made. Once I got the hammer swing feeling pretty good, I shifted my energy into creating some tiles to smash. I made one plain, boring tile, then wrote out some code to spawn it a bunch of times around the player. After I had a way to make tons of tiles, I needed to randomly convert some of these tiles into mines. This is the point when I made some really bad decisions. Now, for anyone who doesn't already know, the beginner's minesweeper board has 10 mines spread across a 9x9 grid. I thought I could just randomly set a boolean value called is mine to true or false when each tile was spawned. I was wrong. When I did this, it caused all my mines to cluster around tiles that spawned first. After 10 mines spawned, the remaining tiles had a 0% chance to be a mine. And on the flip side, this logic didn't even guarantee 10 mines would spawn at all. After a few hours of frustration, I decided to scrap the bad code and rethink my logic completely. To fix my busted game, I had to rewrite the mine creation code and set it to fire only after all tiles were placed. Once all tiles are on the board, a separate script creates random numbers between 0 and whatever the total tile count is. For a beginner's board, this would repeat 10 times. Each randomly generated number is then used to find and convert tiles into mines. This gave every tile an equal chance to be a mine and guaranteed all 10 mines would be placed. After finally getting mines to spawn correctly, I started work on the sweeping part of Minesweeper. To be honest, I never really paid much attention to how the original game handles sweeping. I always thought the amount of tiles revealed was just random luck, and any numbers that popped up were points or something. It's not very clear to me why I always lost this game. If you're like me and had no idea how to play over the past couple decades, here's what I learned. Basically, after the player clicks a tile, the game checks around for any nearby mines. If any of the 8 surrounding tiles are a mine, a number between 1 and 8 will pop up telling you how many mines the tile touches. Now that I finally understood how Minesweeper actually works, these little red flags made more sense. They aren't needed to win, but really help identify tiles you're certain are mines. I will say the question marks are still a mystery to me. If you ever used a question mark, I'd love to know why in the comments below. For this 3D version of Minesweeper, I just decided to scrap question marks altogether. With the core game now feeling mostly complete, it was time to swap out my default Unity shapes with actual 3D models my wife made in Blender. To make the environment feel a bit more inviting, we created a courtyard of sorts and made all the indicator tiles have little flowers. The colors and flower counts roughly match each indicator tile from the original game. If the flower visuals aren't clear enough, I made a simple mini-map that displays what you might expect on a classic Minesweeper board. Just numbers and boxes filled with matching colors. Next, to really emphasize a player's loss when they hit a mine, I turned to Unity's particle system to create some explosions. First, I tried to make a believable explosion from scratch, but it turned out looking like a fuzzy puff of colorful dirt. To improve on this, I searched YouTube and found an awesome tutorial by Gabriel. I've seen a few of his videos before and highly recommend his channel if you're wanting to learn more about Unity's particle system. I'll include a link below. After I got an acceptable explosion working visually, I shifted my focus to the impact it had on the player. The explosion's blast force was harder to create than I anticipated. I tried several different approaches until finally ending on something I liked. It's still not perfect, but to show the player they just lost, time slows down for a split second right when the explosion begins. Then, the player's body is instantly thrust into the sky. 
The point of this was to add some punch to the mine's explosion, but also show the player a chain reaction of explosion set off by their mistake. It looks pretty cool and mimics how the original Minesweeper board reveals all the mines after a player loses. Finally, to make this game a bit more immersive, I created a few sound effects. For my 3D version of Minesweeper, I really wanted hammer hits and explosions to sound good. It took way longer than I care to admit, but after a few variations, I think I finally landed on some decent sound effects. And with that, our 3D Minesweeper game is complete. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a gentle tap on the like button below. I try to release a new game every other week, so subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Also, you can find a link below to download this game free on itch.io. Alright, until next time, you take care of yourself. Bye.